Welcome back, everyone. We are taking a brief pivot down to the loser's bracket. We're going to have two more matches today. We're going to be starting off with Torment versus Synapse. SSB Kid has left us, and I'm now being joined by Alex. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing great today. Happy to be here. Looking forward to uh, casting this match here with you, Cole. Awesome. So, these are the sets that we're going to have coming up for Torment versus Synapse. We're going to have Torment's pick, which is Hillbilly on Blood Lodge. Then we're going to have Synapse's pick, which is Chucky, the good guy, on DDS. And finishing it up, we will have Torment on Torment Creek for Plague. So, uh, so for, for the Hillbilly set, you know, we, we know that Torment, a lot of seasoned 1v1 players on this team. Hillbilly, a pick they've certainly played a lot of and as. So do we have any expectations for this set, Alex? I think we're going to see some very interesting, uh, I guess, high tier plays. That would be my expectation here, especially with the new Billy changes in effect. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to see any competitive Billy um, after these new, uh, this new patch here. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they can actually apply the new Billy um on this you know very very i guess seasoned map very very explored map and uh we'll see what kind of plays come out to see if they can uh secure these sets for themselves yeah so so we've seen a little bit of this pick in this event so far and one of the interesting changes that we've had is the ban on low pro chains which was basically something you would almost always see before and now Absolutely, the adaptation yeah. we're seeing a lot of is Keeping the engravings, but getting that Thompson's mix coming in for the cooldown makes Hillbilly so much more punishing if you're caught out, but also gives the survivors a lot more room to play pallets against him with the removal of the low pro. So we then got uh, Chucky on Dead Dog Saloon, a killer but relatively new killer, but a common map that we see in very good uh, tiles for some of these flicks and the, uh, the, the dashes. Have you seen uh, any, any of that? I okay, so I as far as Chucky goes have not seen any comp either. I'm very, very, I guess, noobish when it comes to uh Chucky here. I don't really enjoy watching him. I don't really enjoy um I guess evaluating how he's played. But I will say him on Dead Dog Saloon should make for an interesting matchup. It's a very open map, it's a very, very uh I guess I would argue killer sided map. There's a lot of potential for his plays, especially with the stealth mechanic and all the grass, you kind of see survivors. Um, you know, taking taking that stealth route of picking those super dark cosmetics and hiding in the grass, and like we saw last match, stealthing out the Oni. It's interesting to see how uh, how Chuggin can, can kind of turn that around and, um, you know, kind of turn it on its head and see what they can do against the survivors with that stealth mechanic. On top of the fact that, you know, very, very mind game heavy map. So uh, we'll see what, uh, what Chuggin can do here with his small size. So we, we've got both teams picking some more mechanical chase-oriented killers for their picks. And if we go to a tiebreaker, we'll have Plague instead, one of my personal favorite killers, but a more macro-oriented strategic killer. So that would be the interesting sort of skill check. Like, all right, maybe you can tie us on mechanics, but can you out-game sense us? And it looks like we are almost ready to load into the first game. So any final thoughts on this, Alex? I think it's going to be a good set. I mean, you got two two very very strong killers. One more focused on the gameplay sense and the uh, the macro sense, like you said. So uh, definitely a good finale if we get to that point. But uh, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a good set. All right, and we are loading into Torment's Hillbilly game against Synapse Survivors. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, officially starting off the gameplay here. Torment versus Synapse. Torment, Hillbilly, Synapse, Survivors. And we've got Billy Chainsong across the map already. Survivors trying to get out of the corrupted area. And Ivan on the Hillbilly already in that overdrive mode, looking to get a curve around this crash pile. The pallet being pre-dropped once again. Something that you can do a little bit more safely with no low pro in play, knowing you will not get hit. But that hillbilly is so fast, and Pally doing a good job of not getting hit by that chainsaw, but this is a very precarious situation to be in. You can get curved here, but the funny <sighs> crash tech. Great job there by, uh, by Renato dodging that tit there. Gonna green the pallet as well, continuing around this uh, this dangerous truck to play. See if Ivan can get a nice little flick off here. Pallet's gonna go down. And then moving here to the next loop. Ivan. <sighs> oh my gosh, okay. Ivan, my apologies for the pronunciation there. Gonna take the M1 here on Renato. Continuing back towards Shaq, going to the safer area on the map. And oh my god, that speed is insane on Billy here. This is this is such a hype killer to watch now with this change. The, the speed especially, I have to keep being told, you don't need engravings anymore, but if you do have the engravings with the overdrive speed on top of that, you just go so fast. This basically is, you know, baby blight. That's part of why we're seeing on this map, I think. And 
we're seeing an interesting thing. A lot of Billy players also kind of moving away from the Bamboozle on this map because so much of the safety on this map is just all of these pallets being everywhere. You don't really need to play around so many windows, and this is just now the double M1 on the pallet at five gens, but we have two gens, possibly three gens that are all at about two-thirds to 75% done, and that is possibly a pain res coming in. It is a pain res, and Ivan ready to just beat across the map with the pop goes the weasel ready to regress another one of these generators. And he finds another survivor who has been working on this hill gen, but he's gonna step back to pop it real quick before committing that chase, and it is Sir on a filler loop here, but actually Ivan not committing to that, decides to go look for someone else knowing there's at least two other gens that are being worked. Maybe I wanna pressure one of those instead. Certainly the ability to uh, pressure other gens with the amount of speed you can get on this killer. I mean, these engravings are insane to watch. We'll be chasing someone towards the outside of the map here, it seems like. Trying to zone away from all the pallets. Putting that chainsaw, going for the flick here. Oh, never mind. Going to be rotating back in towards the uh, towards the hook here. Maybe trying to cut somebody off. Going to take another kick on this generator. Start the regression on that. That 5% off. Chris is going to be on this hook still. I'm not seeing anybody coming into the save. They might be letting him hit second here just to uh, slam these generators, get as much progress as they can. As we see, another generator is going to pop here, bringing us down to three generators left. Yeah, we'll probably see the altruism coming in once some of those gens actually officially pop, but now the dilemma for the survivors is, well, if Pally's already hit second, we may as well let him hang there for a little longer because we don't want him to get tunneled immediately after second. So probably not going to see an unhook coming in on the pallet until he's just about to die. Or Ivan gives them a little bit more of an opening as he really, really wants to stop this particular gen from being popped. And with that crow flying off, he now has no the knowledge that someone is possibly going for that pole. It could be the hook survivor turning the crow off. That is something that can happen. As a chainsaw down onto Dark off screen. Unlucky from the Nia. Definitely not where she wants to be. She had a pretty good pallet right there, just being caught a little bit off guard by the speed, I believe. And now Ivan can sort of hover between this hook and the slug survivor, and there's still a decent gen spread around here. He can just sit here with the chainsaw out and watch Pale die as Dark gets picked up. And this is, once again, a problems team moment. They surely are going to commit to Pale's death here. Yeah, no, I mean, you kind of have to at this point, especially with Billy being the uh, killer, there's nothing you can really do to save him there. If you, I mean, the opportunity cost to save him off that hook is going to be so incredibly high, you're going to lose at least two survivors. But, uh, I mean, what more can you really ask for? I mean, you got your gens, that's what you wanted, but um, no matter what cost now. Dark getting down there was certainly not what you want to see. But we'll see a nice little chase here continue around the main building. Jiggy here trying to run Billy as much as he can around this truck here. It's going to get curved. Let's see, Ivan, oh, an incredible curve there. Gonna go ahead and down Jiggy just almost immediately when he gets that chance to charge. Those engravings are insane with the speed. This this killer is such a treat to watch and Torment, as always, a fantastic Billy team. I remember watching them play this killer again in the, the All Hallows League and it was just as hype then as it is now. I'm, I'm so glad we get to see them playing this killer. We're now down to only one gen remaining, only three survivors remaining, one of them on hook, one injured, and now Dark in the sights of the hillbilly. He does not have a lot to work with. The chainsaw is being pulled out, but that might not be necessary. It could be just a zoning chainsaw, and it will be a chainsaw down onto Dark as Sir gets Jiggy off the hook in the distance, and now this will be another fresh hook and possibly a pain resonance coming in. But a little bit far away from the gens that are remaining, which should not matter a whole lot, given how much mobility this hillbilly has. And look at that gen spread. That's not exactly close, but it's still pretty, pretty tight, especially for, again, a killer with mobility. And we're going to find Sir here on this shack gen. Not a whole lot of progress on it, but remember, Ivan has not brought Bamboozle, and the speed getting him to overshoot the chainsaw onto Surge by just a little bit. Can he curve around this window? And Sir with the firecracker blind around the corner, exactly what he needed. All right, we're going to stop and pop that gen real quick and continue our chase onto Sir. Most certainly. Nope, we're going to leave. I stand corrected. <laughs> You know, I can't help but wonder it, what, uh, what would have happened with that Janet main if that pain res had gone off when he hooked, uh, I believe it was Dark. Because um, as you saw, he didn't actually get a pain res on, uh, on one of those hooks he got there, so that could have been some more pressure he got, but maybe he just didn't think it was, uh, it was worth it. But Jay's going to be taking Chase to the complete opposite corner of the map if Billy commits. Yes, he's going to. Yeah, to the again. complete opposite side of the map. Those gens are going to get slammed. He has to know this. Maybe I he's... think he's... Sorry. No, go ahead. I'm just saying, yeah. I, uh, I think he's trying to secure 
as many stages as you can at this point, because with Pain Res and Pop, if you play those gens and you have a Pain Res hook there, you can certainly control the gens a little bit better. And I think he's going to go ahead and head back there, do the best he can to make sure these gens don't pop. But uh... yeah. I think based on that last time he went over to chase Sir, he, he sort of checked in like, okay, I know that the gens that I have left don't have a lot of progress on them, so I've got a little bit of time to try and get this down to cut if I can. The down wasn't coming in fast enough, so that's when he decides to leave, and now there's a little bit more progress on this, and he's going to have to commit to Sir again. But without the Bamboozle, this is a little bit rough of a tile to play, and kind of bumping on the, the corner there. But it is stopping Sir from working these, and if he ever leaves, the remaining two survivors are still injured. He can just try to cast them out with an M1, as Sir is just playing this window as much as he can, and now Pilp is going to leave. And he finds both injured survivors working this gen over here. This can be a chain slug if they are not very careful. Yeah, certainly a lot of potential here. Dark's gonna be taking the chase to this one tiny, tiny pallet. That's all he's got to work with here. Can he avoid the hillbilly on this relatively weak tile that could probably be curved? It plays well enough. Will he down come through here? No, that chainsaw is gonna keep getting revved here. Dark's gonna play that pallet super, super safe. He's gonna go for a little run around here. Will it be enough space? Yes, it appears it will. Pallet gets get dropped. M1 doesn't come through though. Dark's gonna stay up a little bit longer. The best he can here on this pallet. With this Noah speed coming in, this is a little bit harder to play, but it's a relatively safe pallet as now they will know about the Noah on the injured person. And is, is Ivan going to go for this door? I don't think you make this door. Now with Noah. He, he makes it! Nah, nah, he, he knows he doesn't. He's going to have to pre drop oh. that and try to get out of there. Because he, he would he would get the door open and then go down for it most likely. Yeah, my, my mistake. I, I, I misunderstood what you were saying. I apologize. But uh, <laughs> the pallet's being zoned now. But, but now. Oh, okay, well this totem is just kind of close to one of these doors in between, making sure that no one's on it, and deciding to not go for the pickup. Actually, he's, he finds Sir. I believe Sir is the survivor who has not been hooked. This is the survivor that he wanted to find. A down and hook onto David here, into a camp with the chainsaw out, even if they break the Noed. This is the ideal scenario for maximum stages, but honestly, these survivors have done an incredible job of recovering in this game after such an early death. Just... I'm not quite able to get those last hook stages. The chase is coming in a lot better. Survivor's playing a little bit more safe. And now, Sir is going to get hooked in the far corner of the map away from all of this. This will be a death onto him, almost certainly. And I believe that will be seven stages in total with all four fresh. Looks like it, unless, uh, unless I can't math either. But, um, or is that... I can't see it. I don't know. But anyway... Either way, a pretty good result here from uh, Yvonne on this first match of uh, Hillbilly. I mean, like you said, very, very quick death, but the Starbucks definitely played it well, recovered very well. Um, overall, not the worst result. We'll, uh, we'll have to see if uh, the uh, if Starbucks can bring this back in the next game and see what the air result entails. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into this matchup here. We got Synapse on the Hillbilly now. Mr. Yokat here taking off the game to start us off here. Looked like similar engravings. I didn't see it uh, exactly what, it, what items you have, but I did see those engravings there. So we are in for another Speed Demon Hillbilly game. First chase is going to start off really quick here on the Nancy. Starting off somewhere near the main building. Oh, tries to go back for the pallet. Greed's a little bit too hard. M1 is going to come through here. Very, very early hit. Not what you really want to see. See some uh, pre-dropping there as we play this pallet continuously now. Billy's gonna break that pallet. We're gonna see him moved into the corner of the map. Chasing in the corrupted area, it looks like? It is, yes, this is a corrupted area. So very, very good place for Nancy to keep chase. We'll see what uh, what this hillbilly can bring here on this tile. Shinnot takes the M1 through the pallet. Says, no, 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 we go round two. I'm playing that pallet until you break it. He's got another out uh, here. And Ooh. misreads the direction he's coming from, and that's a double M1 onto Shina that will be down to five gens, and they're doubling main, which Painrez will be interrupting this, and this is kind of a rough gen to do on this map sometimes, because you're just in the middle of everything. Anytime the killer is just crossing to go somewhere, he's like, oh, hey, by the way, I see two people here. Let me do something about that. Actually, no Painrez on Yokot, just the pop. Wanting to bring Bamboozle, which was getting him some value, that gave him an earlier down than he would have gotten. And now he can sort of hover here with his chainsaw out, interrupting this main building gen. They've only got the shat gen being progress now. This is a really rough start for Spider's performance, as there is a survivor going for the unhook in the distance, and this will be a down, possibly onto Adri, who does not have a lot to work with, but they should make this pallet in time. Oh, and they die on instead. Doesn't make it. And yeah, I was going to call out that uh, that bamboozle pick over pain res. Certainly an aggressive play there from uh, from Synapse. Hopefully that can, uh, that can get some value. Looks like Nancy's going to go for another quick down here. 
that's gonna be another quick down. No DS, no uh, no anti tunnel perks. That'll be a second hook with Adri being on the floor here. Wow, yeah, this I uh, I don't really know what to say. It's not a good start, just to be honest. But hopefully they have somebody working gens in the background, and uh, we'll see if they can pick it up. This is definitely a more chaotic start to to this match than we had uh, before. And now Steve is the one being chased. And Steve, I believe, is the survivor who had like all the good chase perks against Hillbilly. He's got Urban Evasion, he's got Lies, he's got Resilience. Like this is the survivor they want to be chased. And so far, Yokot is just not taking the bait, does not want to chase Steve, literally anyone else. And he's just gonna be hovering the main building gen here, making sure it's not getting progress. The survivors are just not able to accomplish a whole lot of their objectives so far. So, Shinnok kind of hanging on hook for nothing, as Yokot is just hovering in the distance for whoever might come for it, watching the hook and the Shin at the same time, they have to find something else to do. This is just wasted time for them. Yeah, this is probably not what you want to see as survivors, though. However, we can recall that last game, we also had a very quick death, and the survivors did manage to come back from it, but uh, a Firecracker not going to go through with the blind, unfortunately, and I think Shinnok going to see a, uh, a very quick death as well following the... Uh, following the uh, repeat of last match. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and see Claudette put on a hook here, most likely. Oh yeah, a death at four gens, and another hook coming in, and the Noed. This is not ideal. Not ideal, but, okay, but hear me out. They can actually still play like most of the rest of the map, and maybe with a good enough chase, maybe, maybe, you know? Well, you gotta think, they're, most of the pallets are probably still up, right? There's still some uh, some counterplay to put on this killer. Bamboozle definitely shuts some of that down, but uh, it's not over yet. We'll see what happens, we'll see if they can make uh, some kind of miracle happen, because that's at this point what they're gonna be. Yo Cap proving that he really doesn't need pain rest in order to, uh, to secure this game, but very well played so far. We'll see what they have to, uh, what they get, what they get out of this. The, the rough part of this for the survivors is we do have like this one part of the map where all of the chases have been occurring. That's where the pallets are down, and they're just not able to get out of that area. Like the hooks keep occurring there, which makes them so risky against the hillbilly. Like where Steve is hooked now is a little bit closer to safety, but not by much. And this is what's making it so risky to go for these faster pulls. And they're being punished for it as we got a second generator popping. Adri working on this hill gen. And, but now getting pushed off of it, running Shack does have a pretty good filler pallet, does have Shack pallet still. Yokot just not going to commit to that. Again, choosing his chases wisely is now Ivan going for that save, potentially, but he's being pushed into the unsafe part of the map, and this is probably where we're going to see the commitment to the chase. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, you can easily rotate back to the hook if you need to as well, and from the fact that this pallet's already been thrown. Um, or maybe not. He's not going to commit to the chase here. He's just going to go ahead and let Ivan uh, get out of there. Or did he just lose him? One of the two. I don't know. Who knows? There it's gonna be going back here to secure the hook, and I believe this is gonna be a uh, this is gonna be a kill. Unless you want to send both survivors to go down for this, this is probably gonna be the uh, the death of Claudette here. Because you gotta think, Ivan is or excuse me, Ivan is just gonna immediately go down to that chainsaw, and uh, Nia will go down even faster to the M1. So oh, that's yeah. gonna be a second survivor dead. If wow. You're playing, if you're playing for Wincon, the Wincon here was nine stages, right? Uh, previous. Killer got eight stages, so really all that Yokot has to do here, now that two survivors are fully dead, is get one of these survivors down, face camp them. You can't save against that. You pull your chains out, you got Noed. Literally nothing can be done the next time a survivor goes down. That's probably what we're going to see is now Yvonne is the one in chase around this broken truck. Are we going to get a curve here? Ah, uh, unlucky. No one's going to back out of it. <laughs> You know, I will say it was it was really hype in the last game. How many how many like curves we saw? This has not had as many like hype plays. It's just been a little bit more methodical with the M1 downs and some of Torment survivors getting caught uncharacteristically out of position. Is now Adri getting zoned away from the shack? That chainsaw dash for the zoning and not for the actual hit. Very wisely positioned. Is now Adri's getting pushed back to the main. This will be a down on the Adri, and this hook should be the the win con being secured. But no, Yokod is saying, you know what? I'm I'm going for the 4K. I want to find this last guy, and he's Ooh, almost getting almost, chainsawed there. <laughs> almost having a little bit too much fun there with that little wave. Nearly got chainsawed to death. Smash it value, though. Uh, yeah, a little bit of value there. Isn't going to get hit by the chainsaw, but uh, I believe we're going to see this chase finish up here at uh, the school bus. Does have the good window, though, so he can extend it for a little bit. Never mind. He doesn't even want to uh, play school bus. just wants to go back. back. Oh, damn. He kind of can't. That's unfortunate. Wait. <sighs> Fair enough. Okay. Interesting. 
So with the, with the pickup coming in and now knowing, okay, well, this, la this last guy is over at Shaq. I'm going straight there. I bam the window. I break the pallet. What are you going to do about it? Adri is not going to die on hook faster than I can down Yvonne, almost certainly. That's the mentality here. Bam the window. Just zone him away. Oh, well, we've got a we got a 1v1 at Shaq. Let's go. This is what we've been waiting for. Some of all the lives, but we got to time this. No? Okay. Let's Yvonne leaves in Shaq. That's cheating. He's got a filler pallet here, but that is bammed. What you can do on this area here. This is a pretty safe rock as long as you look and uh, maintain those check spots. Does throw the pallet here. If we're going to see him try to curve around it. Are we going to see a nice little curve from the Billy here? No, he's going to go ahead and just break that pallet. Go ahead With and zone back to Shaq. Shaq window's open now. Bam has worn off and he's still got Shaq pallet. This is really nice chaining. He's got another filler pallet here to play, to try and, once again, wait for that bamboozle to wear off. And you know, honestly, if Yvonne stays here long enough, he might actually be able to try and go for Shaq, but he's got this pallet instead. And does not quite get hit through it. He does have this good window. There will be a bam, possibly. Actually, one more vault, and it's broken, so he's going to play the filler pallet again. And this is actually a really good thing to see from survivors, is you want to use these filler pallets to basically buy you time to deal with the windows getting unblocked, Bam wearing off all of this, rather than just using the same resource over and over again. Very wise resources from Yvonne, but unfortunately for him, he's just getting pushed further and further away from where the hatch is going to spawn. So this is certainly going to be a death onto him. He has nowhere to go. And the 4K2 is a bit of a statement performance from Synapse on the Hillbilly set. Yeah, we'll go ahead and see a uh, very dominant victory here. We'll have to see what the survivors can do in the, uh, the good game set. But in the meantime, we'll watch Yvonne try to dodge that chainsaw that is so freaking fast we'd love to see it that down will eventually come in here from uh from the hill belly very well played chase by yvonne though but uh, unfortunately not enough to uh secure the victory maybe get some style points but um no match points unfortunately yeah so with the the death coming in on the yvonne here we will be preparing for some chucky gameplay on dead dog saloon as our next that we've definitely seen both of these teams pulling out some excellent mechanics and hype chases, and we're going to hope to see some more of that on the second set of the game. Synapse taking this first set, which is what Torment wanted, so now they get to move into the set that ostensibly they are even more comfortable on with a lot of confidence, so please stay tuned for that. All right, folks, welcome back. We are starting set two of Torment versus Synapse. This is going to be Yokot pulling up again on the good guy, Chucky, looking for the survivors of Team Torment. After a very impressive hillbilly game, Yokot looking to repeat that, and he's going to be checking around the water tower to find someone, but he's not finding anyone right now. Survivors are doing their best to walk around slowly, being a bit stealthy, not want to be caught out of position here. And so far, Yokot has not been able to find either of them. And because of this map, he's honestly able to sort of hide in these bushes a little bit. It's so hard to see him from around the corner. And it looks like maybe he's got eyes on someone. It looks like he's positioning like he does. And he will see Nia over here. Adri taking sprint burst up towards the main building. Gets that fast fall and looking to commit to the case here. As now, uh, Yokot breaking that breakable wall downstairs. A very odd choice to break. Usually left open. And he takes his gen first. Gets eruption on the main building gen before looking to find where Shinnah might be running. We got two survivors running around the main building. Yeah, we do see a, a bit of a pattern here with survivors trying to get main out of the way quick. We'll see Chucky looking around here trying to catch somebody off guard here in the uh, the field. Not going to be able to catch anybody off though. They're all going to be pre-running. Getting that eruption though. Just setting up that uh, that chain reaction across the map. He does, he does still have some time on Corrupt, so uh, he won't have to worry about getting Gen Rush too hard. Um, just gonna go ahead and break down that Shack door as well. But yeah, certainly an interesting play to uh, break that bottom main door. I'm curious to see what uh, what he has planned for that. Took kind of a weird killer to play against on the Survivor side, because on the one hand, he's got a pretty strong chase power, but you almost feel like you have to play against him as like a stealth killer, where you'd be very careful about your positioning, not giving over tags, making sure that you are just very, very careful until you know where he is. And this has bought uh, Yokot some time to try and get some of these breakable walls down, setting up for these later chases. He doesn't have Bamboozle, often a perk that you see on this map for M1 killers, but deciding that I don't need it on Chucky, and now with Corrupt wearing off, he will find a chase onto Ivan, Ivan, sorry, at the Water Tower, which is how they dropped but not broken, and now the Straight Razor coming in with that Scamper attack that will be a hit onto Ivan. 
who's now running over towards the town, but getting caught a little bit off guard, I think, with where Yokot was pathing, he will be able to play these sort of pseudo TL walls and go back to Water Tower. This pallet is dropped, but not broken. And the scamper coming in. This should be a down onto him. I don't think there's anything can really do with that area. I mean, he just did the same uh, you know, hug time looking thing twice in a row. Very, very strong killer power, especially on this tile here. Didn't really need to even break the pallet, but uh, good little chase there from Ivan, or oh my lord, Ivan. Gets the, uh, gets the down eventually, though. Will we see a pain res come through here, or uh, or no? I'm curious. Surely this is a pain res. Or worst case, it, it is in the middle of this region. So not getting the pain res, but deciding this hook placement is what he wants to defend. You see all these gens around it. He wants to keep survivors here. That's why he went for that hook over basement, for sure. Yep, absolutely. Does get the pop, though, so he will be able to kick a generator and get you know, that 30% off. That is uh, a lot of progress to uh, get rid of there. And go ahead and kick Hangman Jen, it looks like, here, as we see scratch marks being somebody has recently left. They're going to go ahead and get Ivan off uh, off hook immediately. So it looks like he's going to probably get uh, tunneled out here by this Chucky. A little bit of unfortunate for uh, for Ivan if that's his play, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Oh, just goes through, and he's going to vault the window a little bit preemptively, trying to predict that he would go outside, but... No, just stays inside, waits it out. Oh, but the DS comes through. That'll be, uh, that'll be Shack Pallet dropped. The crucial thing here for Yvonne is to just get as far away from this 4 gen as possible. And that's exactly what he's done. And that makes it so much less appealing for Yogat to try and, and tunnel him. But now he has to find either try to find Yvonne on that reset, or, which he, it looks like he has done here, he sees Yvonne running off into the corner, which is probably better for him still than trying to find a completely new survivor to chase using these patented chuck spots to try and see where Ivan might be running and catch him off guard, but he's got a pallet and Scamper gonna come through and this should be once again a down on him. Oh, but he does whiff and that gives Ivan distance to make it to the main building, which a little bit unsafe now because of all the broken doors, but he should still be able to make this. Guess the fast fall through, I believe that's gonna save his life going back here to the best pallet in the entire game. We'll see what uh, what he can do against this killer here, because, I mean, yeah, that scamper just going under the pallet. Super, super quick down here, most likely. Never mind, he goes and gets the whiff. Crouch deck buys him some time, but not enough for the M1. And we'll see two, all three survivors right now were working on gens in that loose 4 gen. They really, they're going to pop gallows for this. That is huge. And they still kind of have three gens-ish around this area, but this gallows gen being popped is the crucial one, as Yvonne is being dragged sort of deeper into that. Uh, territory, but not close to all of them, so much less ideal of a hook, but yeah, with the tunnel possibly coming on Devon here, Adri's got really good progress onto this other gen, Steve sort of hovering for the pull here, Nancy similarly, Shina on another one of these generators, Yokot is going to have to be very judicious in what, who he decides to go for right now. Yeah, 100%. Also, that hook was not a pain res hook, so he didn't even get to kick off any of the generator progress they'd, uh, they'd made before. Also, putting the pop on that, uh, that gen back in the field. He is going to get the full people play on Yvonne, making that, uh, that tunnel even harder. Not going to buy him all too much time, though, as that chase is going to continue here. Oh, oh, never mind. He's going to go and pick up, uh, pick up Steve here and take his fresh hook. I th yeah, I think he wants to drag Steve deeper into this territory and possibly get a pain res. I'd be very curious to see what his... Uh, Painter's RNG was this game, but with that gen popping, I think this gen spread has been functionally broken. Yeah, so you've got like four cornered, four opposite corners for these gens. Two kind of close, but not enough that you can really hold these anymore. So now this will be the point where you want to try and find Yvonne to get that tunnel out, but Yvonne can play this very, very carefully with the survivors on his team giving calls of where Chucky will be going. Well, it looks like those call-outs weren't uh, the most super effective thing in the world, seeing as Yvonne is already caught out back in that corner of the map. Let's see what uh, Chucky has to do here to get this first hit. It is a very weak pallet, as you know, but oh, that first hit is just going to come through so quick. Let's see if he can make anything last here at the main building. And then, again, like you said, super unsafe since all those breakable walls are down. But uh, he's... Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was about to say, that's interesting. He just chooses not to go for Yvonne, just going to go back and... Try to play this uh, this gen block. It doesn't really, really exist anymore. Like that one breakable wall that's broken is something that you don't normally see broken, and that gave Yvonne a, a more direct path to the front window of Bane and possibly gave him an out. I'm really curious why it was broken. I wonder if there's like a particular like dash that Chucky players go for from from there to this window, and that's the reason. Because I don't think I've ever seen that before in a in a competitive match. 
I don't believe I have either, to be honest, but just a very, very quick down on Steve there. Well played for him, though. Buys as much time as he possibly can. And I wonder what the gen progress is on the rest of these, because, I mean, you got to think, because there's probably been someone on Water Tower. There's probably been someone... Yeah, there's Water Tower. I would, assume there, was, I would assume there was somebody else on uh, that gen back where they were resetting, but uh, I guess not. But just focusing in on Water Tower to pop that gen. Oh, Sprinter's going to come through, deny any hit there. Yeah. So we'll make it to some safety here. <laughs> nice little window tech looking sort of thing there. Dodges that hit, makes him run into a wall. Well played by Adri there. And uh, looks like Chucky's gonna go ahead and go back towards Hook. Try to tunnel out the uh, the Claudette maybe, as he does have two survivors on Death Hook. So if you can get two of them out of the game and then play the gens, you might have a chance, especially with Pop and Pain Res. Um, but right now this is looking like a, uh, like a dangerous uh, situation for Chucky and the survivors. They've really gotta play well, both sides. Depending on who he can find, you might want to be going for fresh hooks and pain resonance here because yeah, as you get closer yeah. to the end of the game the prospect of trying to camp someone who's fresh for even more stages is appealing but yoka doesn't have any end game perks it'll be really hard for him to like actually try and confirm a death if there's still three other survivors running around that hook and depending on where the hook is relative to the gate placement is this is a tag on to yvonne who's going to run straight for the main building i believe his chase perks he's got head on and smash hit he doesn't have a good chase perk he has to be very careful as he doesn't have a whole lot to work with here. Chases have been happening here. No resources left, no exhaustion perks to play with. This should almost certainly be the down onto gotcha. Yvonne here, the death onto Yvonne as the last gen pops. And with the remaining survivors being healthy, we are in a position where this could end up being a five stage game. You can just pull W from the door once Chucky hits you and you're out. He does not have, doesn't have Noah, doesn't have no way out, nothing like that. He's relying on this gen regression, which has not quite gotten him enough stages in this game. The survivors of Torment playing significantly better this game than before to not give some of these early downs. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm willing to bet that the uh, the pain res RNG did not come through here for Chucky this game. I mean, what, three of his first hooks, two or three of his first hooks were not pain reses? So with that extra gen, uh, gen progress taken off, probably would have been a little bit of a different game. But now you take what you can get, you do the best you can with, uh, with your setup. But... Very well played from uh, from both sides here. They, I think we started. Up. <laughs> see if we can see the uh, pro body blocks come through here, and I believe we are. Yeah, Nia's gonna come through, block that Chucky in, and that'll uh, that'll probably be a three man out here unless something goes terribly wrong. But it should be too long of a cooldown for uh, Chucky. Yeah, that'll be the uh, the three man out for the survivors. Very well played coming into uh, end this first game here. Five stages is gonna be rough. Yeah, I know absolutely. I mean, you gotta you gotta bring something out if you wanna if you wanna bring this back now. Yo Cat did the best he could, like we said, probably bad uh pain res RNG with that gen lock being in that corner. But um you know, we'll have to see what uh what what they can do on Survivor here and uh hopefully bring it back so they don't uh, just lose this next set immediately. But we'll see you guys in this next set. Stick around. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dead Dog Saloon. Zynox here on the good guy, gonna be trying to bring in as the best result he can as the good guy here. Six stages, I believe, is the uh, is the goal to beat. So uh, we'll see if he can uh, if he can make it happen here. Bringing in a very interesting build with agitation, pop, pain res, and corrupt. Finding an early hit here on Mordo over by the water tower. Let's see where this chase takes us. Hopefully, it uh, can last a little bit longer. Then, uh, then the last first chase game get a better start for the uh, for the survivors here because they the pressure is definitely on them to uh, bring a better set this game since it was a bit of a rough one for uh, for Chucky last game. This water tower pellet, as we've seen, not safe at all against Chucky. Just a very very quick down. Not what you want to see to start off the game. Yeah, I mean we saw in the previous game just how crucial those early or the, not the early hooks but the. the hook placement can be it's why we're seeing so many killers in this event bring agitation and yeah we saw another interesting thing i believe this claudette is bringing distortion you don't see that whole lot of that because usually aura reading is tightly regulated but chucky is has some add-ons that he can run where when you go into your your, your scamper mode sorry heidi ho i think it's called you can see the aura survivors near you or when you charge up your dash you can see the auras and claudette bringing that just to let her teammates know what the chucky might be bringing whenever she gets into chase with him because it's even harder to play around chucky's power when he just has wall hacks on you and now this is a tag onto claudette going for the unhook and the snowball could begin here as yeah he's going for freshes yeah certainly an interesting uh play style here it does read that palette very very well great job sir 
Just continuing here around this pallet here. Gonna be trying for the mind game here. Probably gonna wait for his power to come back so we can dash around it. Get that slice and dash back up. He's gonna get the down on Sir. Very well played by Zynox there. We love to see these shucking mechanics, but this is, again, we know there's another pain resonance hook coming around here, but Zynox opting for a more central hook, which of course could also still be a pain resonance. And he sees, I think, two survivors working on this main building generator. That's gonna get pain res. And if they commit to this, He's got a Paco's Weasel coming in for them, and this this one is so much closer. This is going to get nuked by Pop, and now Xynox can just sort of hover here between these two gens as Gallus is going to pop soon. Mordo being injured, the one working on that, is now Dark going for this pull. These survivors opting for some fast pulls in this game, really going to give um, Xynox some pain that's top value if he's able to just recycle these downs over and over. Yeah, this is definitely a good game for Zynox, especially with those two Sewer Jokes already coming through, kicking 50% off the generators. Hasn't broken down the main uh, main building doors, though, so it's not as uh, unsafe of a place yet. Let's see what, uh, what he chooses to do here. Just taking the injury on Dark and going to go ahead and kick that gen. Not with Hop or anything, so hopefully just trying to start the regression here. Goes on to tech both Heidi Ho mode. See if we can spot anybody out, go for a free down. Dark ain't going to see him, though. He's not going to get caught off guard here. Misses the slice and dice. Going to go and hug a cactus instead. Move back towards the best pal in the entire game. Oh, and he's gonna swing through and he's gonna get the down here. It's just so hard to see Chucky. Like, Zynox doing a good job also of like using the, the cover of the main building to hide his position from the survivors. Uh, Dark getting caught a little bit off guard and then just not able to see Chucky around the corner as he swings to the pallet like a madman. And I mean, to be fair, you get zoned that pallet, you don't really get anywhere anyway. But that's the second gen popping. We got three hooks. Two survivors injured. It's really easy to get it caught off guard by Chucky. As now, Sir is in a position for possibly his second hook. As this will be a down on to Sir with that dash coming around the corner. And Apocalypse the Weasel, I believe. Yeah. This is where things start to get out of control. Yeah, this is... I don't even know what to say. This is crazy. This is crazy good for Zynox. I mean, that's... A, like, you mentioned a little bit. This is what I was saying at the beginning when the uh, campfire chat. Like, you have the ability to play stealthily on this map because of your size. You also have the ability to have an incredible chase power and just end stuff immediately. Cut these survivors off of good loops and, you know, then punish them on bad loops. It is crazy how powerful Chuck can be on this map. But uh, we're going to see Mordo running towards the main building, not resetting just yet, so hopefully he won't get, get uh, caught out here. Another free down. That'll be the fourth stage. Hopefully, uh, hopefully no more come through for these survivors here. So this hook that Sir is on is in a really awkward spot. It's it, it, There's not a whole lot of safety around it. If you are getting tagged on a one-for-one one there, you are most certainly going down right after. But now Zynox has got Mordo in his sights, and this is another survivor who is on only their first hook, but still injured, getting a lot of straight reds value here. This could be a curve around the corner, and it will be a curve onto Mordo. Not quite able to make that pallet to die on it. Yes. Nia's got the fire tracker. Does it work? It does not work, but she blinds her teammate. And that is another, you know, important side quest when if you're running a firecracker or a flashbang, please do that. They will love you for it. As now Zynox pops another gen and we're at the tie con with the fifth hook coming in. And the survivors have got to get three more gens on without giving over another hook stage. Yeah, looking pretty grim for the survivors here. I mean, three gens, no hook state with, on against the Chucky. I mean, what can you really do? And I mean, really, it looks like you're just going to camp out Mordo. I mean, what else, you know, what else is there to do? You know, if you get another down, that's just game over right there. So, survivors are going to be sweating gens here, just getting as many done as they can. Dark here looks like he's going to be possibly rotating in for the save. I didn't exactly see where he was aiming at, but um, see if anybody tries to go for this or if they're going to make some kind of play happen here because it's getting really, really close to the uh, the finale here. He has no reason to just not play for the secure. No, absolutely but not. He's there. Absolutely not. I mean, what right. else should you do, right? You know, if you get that uh, that kill goes through, you win the game. But the problem now is, you're, if you're only sending one survivor for this poll, it's a guaranteed one for one, and that doesn't get you anything. You need to send two people if you're going to pull for this. Otherwise, Nia is just wasting time here. She doesn't have balance. She's not going to get that for the stagger. So I guess they're just playing for gens at this point, but... That is going to secure the win con for Torment on this set. You're going to tie us up and bring us to that plague set after this. As we keep playing this game out, we're now down to a 3v1 with three gens remaining. And I believe one survivor who's also on death look if they are the one that's found. And the Yardstick letting him know where this Renato is. I think Renato is a fresh hook. Tag onto Pally with the straight razor. Kick onto the gen. And a third gen pops in the distance. But Zymax, of course, big chillin' here. Yeah, basically just saying to survivors here, I hope you enjoyed your hillbilly game. I'm going to give you that same treatment now. Hope you uh, hope you had fun. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, probably a chase on the Renato here. Will this be a quick down? It's a TNL, so not the safest tile. Ah, oh, 
plays it a little bit wrong, gets the wrong predict. That's gonna be another fresh down for uh, another pain res here. Oh, but that gen, that gen does get popped. Pally has to predict, but Xynox has got yardstick, so he knows. Like, he just straight up knows what, yeah, what you're doing. Yeah, true. Fair enough. I, I, you know, I forgot about that add-on. Like, I, that little green add-on at the, uh, the bottom left there, that allows him to see uh, survivors see their aura, which you were talking about earlier, just to clarify on that. But, yeah, I totally forgot about that. That is such a strong add-on. Flick on to Nia. She gets distance here, and so... Pally looks like also has Renewal available. Xynox breaking chase to sort of stay around these three gens in town and street. He knows is all he has left to worry about, and now he has found at least two, both injured survivors working the same dinner. That's a little bit risky. Actually, no, Pally just got his heal from the Renewal, and he will take the tag immediately anyway. He does have Lithe here. Will he be able to get anywhere with it? He's playing behind town, but not a very great area to be. Xynox is sort of mind-gaming this with the Chuck spots, and... Pally doing a good job of keeping maximum distance, but he has to be careful to not get um, dashed around here. It's now about to come in. Does avoid the flick. Not enough of a blight turn there, but uh, looking like it's going to be a pretty quick chase for Pally. You're only having one pallet around uh, around this area to play. Will he be able to outstealth the Chucky long enough? Because he can just scamper under it. Never mind. Okay. He's not actually going to go play the gens. You know, every time I speak and say he's going to, you know, have a bad chase. He just goes and uh, plays the gens again every time. Oh, well, we'll find the Claudette here, looking like a free hit on Sir. Yeah, that's gonna come through. Sir is also on Death Hook, so if he chases him down here, that would be another kill if he could manage to get the uh, the down. But probably not gonna happen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the the jump scare Claudette was not in Zynox's DDS bingo card here. Is sort of just vaulting into his face. I think they both got a little bit disoriented there. Is now Sir is gonna try and drag Zynox away from these gens. Is an enticing target being injured and on Death Hook, but. Doesn't really need to commit to that. Distortion also will let her know that yes, Chucky is still around here. She goes down the pile those anyway. Weeds. You could so see him coming that. through those weeds. Yeah, that loop is so short. It's it's hard to react to that normally, and the vision not being there makes it even more brutal. And that's the second death coming in, and especially in the situation, Zynox with the straight razor can just play this out, almost hit and run. But they do pop the last gen at least as now Xynox can possibly try and find one more kill in this set. Actually, possibly a second. That appeared to be the healthy survivor that popped that gen, because there's no blood around those scratch marks. And Xynox has found someone else. This is probably the injured survivor, but it's hard to tell who it is in the distance. Yes, that is Pale on the Renato playing behind main building, just trying to get as far away from his teammate as he can. As we don't quite have eyes on where Xynox is wrapped around, he could be mind-gaming this. Money in the main building would be a new tactic indeed. I would be uh, curious to see how that one works out. But it uh, looks like Pally's going to be really rotating off here to the other side of the map, hopefully going for that gate as Dark is probably sticking to it to get that thing open. See if he uh, if he catches him off guard correctly. Oh, he does find him because of behind him. Dash is going to come through and Pally's going to go down. Probably going to see Dark go ahead and leave and take that, uh, that one man out. Yeah. See, the one man escape here, unfortunately not enough. Zynox with an absolutely incredible Chucky game. I mean, those those beginning chases were, were crazy, right? You saw three pain reses, you saw three pops almost immediately as the game started. That's the kind of gem progress you want to see. That's the kind of gem progress that I'm, I'm willing to bet the, uh, the survivors you wanted to see last game. But um, yeah, incredible game from Zynox, very well played. At 3k10 coming in, we're going to be looking to go move on to our tiebreak plague set on Torment Creek with Torment fittingly starting off on the killer. And we will be, be looking to see which of these teams can play out this slower, more methodical set better than the other. So please stay tuned for the conclusion of this match. See you guys then. All right, folks, we're kicking off the tiebreaker between Synapse and Torment. Torment playing the Plague first on their own creek. We've got the Synapse survivor sort of stealthing around the corn, trying not to be found. Pally in that terror radius, and we do have what appears to be a three-gen-ish topside as Zynox trying to get some puke through the cracks of the main building, and he is able to do it, but it will not connect to Dark, who's going to keep running main. They do have a pretty good window here, and we should keep an eye out. We've got a red puke pool in the main building. The placement of those red puke pools is very important. Xynox has got two of them from the get-go, and now leaving here, finding a survivor at the cow tree, and Nia is going to get infected in the distance, so we know she has touched the generator that was puked on previously, and now Chase going on to Pala, who's running Shaq. We know this is where they want him to chase, because they have to break one of these generators topside. 
Yeah, certainly a good area for him, considering he also has balanced landing, so he can make use of that hill next to Shag here. But she's going to go ahead and rotate off of him, move back towards these gens on the uh, top side of the map here. So she's going to pre-throw that pallet, true comp player. Going to get him puked on, so if he vaults it, that will get the infection onto Sir. Let's see how he plays around this. He has life as well, so we can make some really good distance here. If she just vaults it, he will get the vault here. And he's going to urban evade away from it. Okay. <laughs> so he's going to run back towards the bottom side of the map, passing Cowtree. As seems Plague is going to uh, go and kick this gen over here, get that eruption started. The common tactic that we've been seeing from Plague players on this map, and in general, is you, if you can get a first, fa a fast first chase, you go for it. But otherwise, you can try to get everyone infected first, and then you can take your red puke and try and get a snowball going, or else you're using your red puke to secure a uh, hook stage, for example. And it looks like Xynox deciding, you know what? Three, three, six survivors is good enough for me to try and use my chase power now. There's not a lot of safety on Torment Creek against the Red Puke as Corrupt has now worn off. And Zynox sees some survivors running in the top side. This is where he wants to be chasing with that Red Puke. A down over here would be disastrous for the survivors of Synapse. There's also another Red Puke here. So if there is someone who goes down and they do get hooked here, not only can the remainder of the Red Puke secure a bit of their stage, but there's another pool ready when... Um, when that ends. And now Nia, Dark over here, getting chased on an edge map pallet. Remember, if you stun a plague out when she's in her red when her she's in a red puke, it will kick her out of power. And Xynox has to be very careful to not let that happen. Dark definitely playing to go for that. Oh, great spin over that uh, over that tile there it does get the down here. Eruption is gonna go off. And Dark's gonna be exactly where he doesn't want to be, unfortunately. And I was gonna, I was gonna call out that uh, that red puke is still available at main. She took the other one that uh, that yellow add-on gives her. So uh, definitely very well played so far. Uh, the gens are getting slammed though. They've completed one, and it seems one was about 60%. So uh, certainly some room for error here. It's not game over just yet by any means. But uh, we'll see what they... Oh, and they have another gen at about 90. Okay. So they have been doing the gens during this whole time, so they have certainly not been wasting their time. Mordo is going to get full infected here, but he's not going to get down just yet. But the real question is, which gens have they gotten done? Because, okay, that one, that one that popped now, that is big. That is one of these top side gens they had to pop. If they were just popping bottom side gens, it would be a problem. But they still do have, I think, I think there is still a three gen around the main building here. And that one way off in the distance that Xanax is not going to care about. So it's very crucial here to just not die in top side. And it looks like Mordo is possibly going to fall victim to bloodlust, but will make Shaq, and I believe Shaq power. <laughs> Cowtree, sorry, will be the down on the Cowtree, not quite able to make it to the side to drop it, and Xynox possibly able to drag Mordo deeper into the top side, and that is exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. You have to kind of wonder, I don't remember exactly who picks where the basement is, but imagine how, ba how bad this would be for them if uh, if he had gotten Pally in the basement there, if it spawned that main. That would have been incredibly bad. So certainly a, a good thing to not have basement up there where that uh, where that pre-gen is. And like you said, they did get one of them broken, uh, one of the one of the gens in the gen lock broken, which is good for, uh, which is good for, uh, so we got a little bit more work to do, a little bit more of a, uh, of a challenge ahead. Yeah, this is where we're going to start seeing the, the slow game come into the picture. A lot of these resources have been used. Xynox, I believe, still has one red pool ready to go, and the survivors have to be very careful to pre-leave these generators. If you cannot afford to die topside, you have to play super respectful of the plague, even though, yes, it's kind of an M1 killer. Xynox deciding, you know what, now is my time. I'm taking that red puke. I'm going to find some people, and I'm going to get a snowball going. We'll see if they can make it happen. I would assume most of the players are going to run down towards that bottom side of the map. And, ooh, perfect rock dodge by Pally there. And another dodge coming through, which he's just wasting as much time as he possibly can. Very well played. And a- Oh, I was about to say that third one dodged too, but hitting his pinky toe there and getting the down on that free health state, that's unfortunate for him. Hopefully they're on those gens slamming him out. I think we just saw the aura of one, of one survivor on the, that far left gen. Oh man, that red puke is just crazy strong, especially on ping. There's still about 50% of it left, and now Xynox is returning to the top side of the map. Pally did a good job of running out about half of the power, but that's not quite enough for the survivors to get the gen pressure they want on the other side of the map. And now Sir, in a very awkward position, still having the red puke up and not really having anywhere to go. This is where you really don't want to die, because now Sir can get hooked deeper in this territory, and then what's going to happen? You have to cleanse if you want to save Sir, but if you do cleanse, 
ideally, you know, far, far away from this, you're just giving Xinox even more opportunity to pick up the power, and that's just the trade-off you have to make. The more people cleanse, the more power they get. So you you almost have to have everyone cleanse if that's the play you're going to go for, but do you really want to give Xinox three more uses of power to save Sir? You know, I would assume they'll have at least one or two fountains that spawn at the very bottom, um, ideally for them, so that way they can cleanse once or two times, so that way if she wants power, she'll have to go all the way across the map and probably give up a gen. But um, it looks like they're honestly not going to go for it, because they're probably going to rotate down there and healed by now. They are going to get Sir off that, uh, off that hook as well. Xanox wrapping around to cut off the escape route, not going straight to him. This is, he wants to just keep them zoned here. Mordo maybe being caught a little bit out. Oh, Pal's still down, but we'll get tagged through. That's the eruption. And once again, this is going to be another hook deeper into topside. Now, I will point out, though, if the survivors are able to play this a little bit more methodically, they are doubling that gen. They can possibly break that if Xanox does not get hooked there. It looks like they're not going to commit to it. Because of these gen changes, if you are able to play it slowly, there's only so many times Xanox can come over and kick these gens. An eruption, the first kick and the proc, that's going to take two of your eight uh, charges. Yeah, we'll see a bit of a uh, chess match come out here as they try to whittle down those uh, those regression charges, I guess you can call them. But um, yeah, she does. Is that a... No, that's a white fountain for a survivor, so it's not a red fountain. Okay, fair enough. I was going to say that uh, she went over another red fountain that uh, main, but I was thinking about it the incorrect way. So, Pally is getting caught out here a little bit, unfortunate. Will he be able to make this M1? No, he will not. He's gonna be able to get that window. Playing a TNL, though, not the safest tile you wanna be at. How much longer can he run? Cause this could be a, uh, a bad down, especially with Eruption going off again. Yeah, this, oh, is, man. this is the value of Eruption on sets like this, where you can just get that extra little bit of time, you can afford to commit to a chase knowing, all right, I got like 10% off that generator, that will buy me some time to get back there and interrupt it, and now they're going to have to send someone to try and save Pally on this hill. And they also have to make sure that they're not getting caught by Xinox when they're rotating around. But we're going to have to see, this is... A little hard to read how this is going to go. Surely the survivor should be able to pop one more gen. And I want to point out, they have this entire time had another generator on the opposite side of the map, which they don't care about. They can go and pick that up any time. As long as whatever happens in this game, they take the time to go and pop that gen for win con, then they're chilling. But they just have to be careful to not get, you know, chain slugged around while they're trying to break this top side three gen, which is the priority. But we can't we can't forget that if the game starts looking dire, they've got an extra gen to, to do in the distance. Yeah, absolutely. And I did believe we did see the entity spikes covering up that uh, that gen on the right, which means I I believe it means it can't be regressed anymore. So uh, as far as we'll not be able to lose any more progress on that generator for the remainder of the trial, so I'll probably be the one they focus out. Most likely, we'll see. But um, yeah, I'm curious to see how they play this because this is this is do or die at this point. Xanax has found Mordo. Mordo, I believe, is on Deathhook. That's a really good find. Is he Deathhook? I, I know someone is. I'm pretty sure. Oh, Mordo. that's crazy. Yeah. Mordo and Pally both on Deathhook. So this is now the 3v1 kicking off. And Xanax not having any more red pukes available. But the damage has been done. Just with the regular M1 chase, it's so risky. I don't know if they pop this in time, you know, Sir agreeing, you know, we don't. And you know what? That gen's also got spikes on it. That can't be kicked anymore. Any progress they get is permanent. And Xanax now realizing that with that dis Okay, they did pop that uh, distant gen. So now they have main building almost done. This bottom side of the map is basically completely out of play now. But Xanax can just sort of hold this choke and see the crows flying off knowing who is going where. Yeah, I think this is really going to be a waiting game. And, oh, Pallet choosing to cleanse on the opposite side of the map. I mean, he is on Deathhook, so it is a fair play. And at this point, it is going to be a waiting game since the progress cannot be reversed. So, I don't know. Are we going to see the survivors cleanse and then slowly but surely rotate in to get that uh, that last progress on each of the gens? Because you would assume, right? Gens are probably at about 70% each, but... Okay, Zyno is just immediately taking that red spit. But they make this. Oh, the gen is going to come through. Okay, the gen is going to get completed. Fair enough. And the gates and the gates are opposite too. So this is, you know, honestly a bit of a gamble. But now Xanax has this window of opportunity to try and get one, two, maybe even two more downs. It's because Pally has also sort of got re sick from working on that gen with his teammate. But it will take him some time to actually get injured from that. 
But who is Xynox actually going for? They don't appear to be in his with anyone right now. Maybe loosely on Dark's trail. Yes, that is the case. And because Pally's on death hook, Dark is first hook. Yeah, Xynox would want to get either Dark or Sir here. Dark has hope and smack through the fountain. Yeah, they call him EO from those dodges, but unfortunately wasn't fast enough on that last one. Is going to go ahead and go down. That will be a uh, another, not fresh hook, but uh, it's not Pally, so it's going to be another hook state for free. Kind of, uh, kind of the better choice to go for him there. Is going to injure Pally on his way out, saying, you know, thank you for playing. See you next trial. And uh, I believe that's going to be the, uh, the conclusion here. We'll see the death of Dark as Sir and Pally go ahead and get out with two men escapes. What is that, a nine-stage nine, nine game with two kills? That is a very, very impressive result. We'll have to, nice. see, if, uh, we'll see, have to see if they can pass that in this next trial. I mean, wow. Good game. Very well played. Nine stages, really good. This was a little bit more of a controlled game than we have been seeing. So definitely the survivors of Torment have going to have their work cut out for them into the next game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are in what is possibly the final trial here of these two teams. We'll see what uh, Yokat can do on the plague. I believe that was Yokat I saw. Yeah, Yokat playing on the plague here. We'll see what uh, what happens here in this potential final trial. A lot of pressure on both teams. We saw a very, very impressive result. Nine stages, two deaths um, in that last trial here with uh, certainly an interesting three-gen setup around main, or even a four-gen setup, dare I say. But... Um, yeah, Yokai going to be bringing a little bit of different build. So he has chosen to bring both of the Apple add-ons, which give him two extra pools of corruption. So rather than the two, um, the two that you would, that, excuse me, the two that you had last trial, um, Yokai now has three to start off with for free. So he will have a little bit more pressure um, in exchange for uh, in exchange for not having that purple add-on. And he's wow, he's playing super aggressive. He's going to immediately take that red puke, go after Adri here. Yeah, and you can afford to do that when you get this extra use of your power. The uh, the purple add-on was Devotee's Amulet, which is the more common one, I think, which gives you an extra 20 seconds on your power. So your, your trade-off here is, I want to say it's three 40-second uses versus two 60 seconds, or maybe it's 20 seconds longer. I'm, I'm actually not sure. But Adri, if there's a fast down here, this could make it well worth it, especially a basement hook even. And now going for the point tech, Baiting to see if there's a teammate around for a save, but probably there was oh. someone right there behind them. That's not what you want to see. I mean, that red power is gone too. That is a completely yep. wasted pool now. I mean, basically, well, so you got your down, you got your pressure on Adri there, but you have also lost your corrupt. Uh, Thanatophobia is not really doing all that much for you, and uh, you're down a red pool, so that's a really, really clutch save. Immediately taking another red, red spit. He just wants to go for this down. Okay. He super aggressively, and he's going for it. That was just a really risky gambit on that first pallet save. And now, it looks like there's not really anyone in his sights. This is kind of that dilemma with the Oni power, where it's like, you know, you, you kind of, you have all this power, but you have to have someone in your sights first. And if you just can't find anyone, it's so tragic, as Shinna has been found on the comp Cheryl, actually kind of blending in with the corn. I like the adaptation on this, um... Survivor pick and now sort of being zoned into this corner of the map it does have a jungle gym But Yoka looks like not committing and instead finds Adri over here a little bit out of sorts Who will certainly go down at this TL wall? Not on a pallet this time. So this will be a hook Yeah, that'll be the uh, first hook coming through hopefully a pain res I mean if it's not you are really not looking too hot because those gens are definitely getting slammed on the opposite side of the map Not a pain res Wow, okay Yokat is definitely gonna have some catching up to do after this one because he has what one pool left or did he use all three? I can't remember somehow. I'm very he's tired. Very sick. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's used two pools, and crucially, the survivors in that time have broken two of these topside gens. There's not really a good gen spread left for Yokat, which is really unfortunate. He does have one more pool to use, and it's right next to that hook in those TL walls. And he does also have no available. I guess we see here this gen and these two around the hook are what his spread is for these last three, ideally. But the survivors have, you know, much less regression to worry about. They're mainly there to avoid that last red pool and the noed. And it also, they should know where that last red pool is because there was a chase occurring around the TLs where it is. Yeah, it's definitely been called out by now. They're not going to be uh, oblivious to that fountain over there. However, he is going to be hitting second hook here, or uh, second hook state here, unless there's a save right now. But 
I, okay, there's a there's a save right now. I believe Yo Cat wanted to grab that red puke and immediately camp for uh for a kill, but not gonna come through. He has, he's gonna have to do a little bit more work with this red spit. And if if this if this window of time for this red pool does not pay off, it's probably gonna be game. <laughs> you just don't have a lot else going for you here. And Chase is gonna be on Shinaw, who's playing sort of behind these jelly rolls as we call them in the states, hay bales. Um, to give some cover, but now, also at this point, just making as much distance as Shinnok can find into the corner of the map away from these remaining gens so his teammates can pop them. A exactly what you want to do. Now with the third gen popping and pressure on the others, this is just a good, solid macro play from the Spy vs. Team Torment. We had this question at the beginning of this match, who was going to be able to play out a macro set? We knew that we were going to see a lot of good, good play on the, the micro-oriented killers, and now the answer is being given to us that Torment looks to be a significantly better team on account of this kind of game, and Yokot is having this game sort of slipping through his hands. Yeah, I mean, he definitely played an all-or-nothing playstyle strategy, and unfortunately looks like a nothing so far, but it's not over yet. Maybe he can make something happen with the two hook states he's got, but with no red pool, no gen lock to hold, and really no gen perks, it's uh, it's not looking too hot. And did he have bamboozle? No, he doesn't even have bamboozle, so he can't even pressure survivors in chase that well. I guess the only real thing he has going for him is that he has his pain res stacks, and he still has no end to play through. So he can definitely he can still make some things happen in the end game, and I'll you know slow it down to get to the end game. But um, I don't know. We'll have to see what uh, what he can do here. Not taking the chase. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Noah's definitely a spicy choice on plague. You don't because of how the I mean, the survivors will often cleanse into the end game to give you your red power, but. A lot of times you will be in in-game scenarios where the survivors are already injured anyway, although you do get the speed. I feel like when you see endgame parts on Plague, it does often tend to be no way out compared to no ed. And Steve just playing this main building really safely. We have high progress on this gen, and now this is going to be Shinnah being caught out. But with Sprint Burst, it's not really that big of a deal. Shinnah is able to make the same window that Steve was using earlier. Yeah, very nice chase around main building as the uh, the gen switch probably getting worked on over on the bottom side of the map. but. Yeah, we see uh, we see a skill check missed on one of those gens over there. So probably uh, probably some good progress here on these. Thanatophobia is in full effect now, so he does have that going for him. But um, yeah, Ace, I believe, was in this tile here. Or no, it's uh, that's Adri actually, Nia. And that's all lie that's gonna come through, take us over towards the left side of the map, keep him away from the gens as long as possible. He's gonna lose the 50-50 though. He's gonna get on very very quickly. But uh, with no eruption and no real gen perks, not uh, not too much of a problem here. Unless he can make a pain rest hook. Nope, we, we already saw this hook was not a uh, was not a pain res, so is not going to be able to kick any more gen progress off. Yeah, really unlucky. The survivors just have enough of this. That's a fourth gen popping, and the gen split being what it is. Survivors just have so much, and this one's so close to being done too. Survivors also doing a good job of playing to their exhaustions and not letting themselves be caught out of position. Yvonne is going to be able to make this window here as well. Just looping the hay bales just a little bit before that, and now he can run up the right side of the map if he wants to. Just has to be careful, if he's down here, there is a basement there, but he's got a jungle gem and the pallet is still up. So Yokai just not going to commit to that, looking to find, desperately hoping that he can get someone else out of position. Notice, wrapping around the cow tree from like the side of main to try and zone survivors away, but they have pre-left in time so that they're not actually getting cut off. We've got both Steve and Adri running here. And the chase will be on to Adri, who is on death hook, but live being used on that pallet and able to make distance. I think Adri here just accepting his death and just trying, once again, to get to the corner as much as possible, but actually takes it out, does not quite make this pallet, so this will, in the end, be the death onto Adri, but Steve is still probably here for this pallet save. And he is not. So with Adri being dead, it's going to be a fourth hook state. But Yokot has to get 10. He needs six more hook sages in the end game. And that last gen. Wait, that might have been a pain res on Adri, actually. That was a pain res. That was indeed. That might be enough to buy time for Yokot to get down to this last gen. I believe this is Shinna and Yvonne both doubling it. And this could be a problem if they grieve this too much. Yokot is here. And Yokot's possibly going to cut them off in the window. It's, it's Shinna and Steve. They wrap around again to try and make this main. Uh, this shack vault. And. Steve kind of being this tile Steve is this tile is disgusting. I mean, look at that window right next to the L loop. That is that is a crazy strong setup for these survivors. I mean, that's just what saved them. What two different people and it saved the A's multiple times earlier. What can you really do? Oh, but the doubt is going to come through on Steve there next to basement. So we could see something come through here. He has not been hooked yet, so he still does have a pain res available, 100. percent 
Ah, oh, but that gen is gonna come through. That's unfortunate for him. No, it is active now. He's gonna be a little bit speedier. But here's the thing. Steve is fresh. So Steve we're, fresh. we're at we're at four we're at four hooks right now. That's the fifth hook onto Steve. We need ten. And with no ed speed boost, there is leader and resilience on Shinnah, actually. So this is a very fast gate open, but Shinnah knows probably not going to make it with that no ed speed coming in. And Yoka can actually make a recovery here. And no in the opposite corner. Yvonne sees it and will possibly go for the cleanse or the pull. But it's actually very possible for Yoka to actually get more out of this. But committing over to Shinnah here can be a problem. Once again, Shinnah just dying in this opposite corner. The unhook coming in. And there's a gate also over by Shaq. I think Yoka has to go for the the slug here has to go for more but the other gate also has so much progress on it it might just be too little too late yeah i'm pretty sure Man. steve gets steve gets this 100 percent wow what a crazy ending there that gate just taking a little bit too little bit amount of time for the play to okay hang on i don't remember if Yvonne was hooked or not Yvonne's fresh, Yvonne's fresh. He's fresh as well? Okay, if he can manage to both hook Yvonne and get back and hook Shinnah, this would be insane, oh my god. The, big, the killing, killing Yvonne and Shinnah here, I believe, is still only a tie. But still, that would continue the match. Like, at least that's what you want to, uh, to keep going on, right? Certainly better than a loss, I would say. No, wait, no. It, it would be a loss. Would it? Well, I, mean, I don't even think it matters at this point. Steve is found. The last survivor standing is found right at the end of the trial. He's going to be going down most likely here. Bounce landing isn't enough. All Wait. four survivors. It's a 4K. That's a 4K. Synapse actually pulled it back. I mean, I, I feel like the survivors of Torment should have been out there, but the no head value, I guess. What just happened? What? What? Where did they go wrong? Should they have stuck a gate? Should they have not like stayed injured? Where did they? Yeah. We spent I, I all think... that we spent all that time talking about how it looked like it was game over. It looked like they were about to win it, and then just something happened, and Yokat just completely brought it back. Yeah, I don't know more. if it was a no head speed. I don't know if the gates weren't taking long enough or taking too long. Oh. Just... Wow, more I'm I'm lost. More likely, the survivors of Torment just decided, you know what? We want to play for the win here and not the tie, and it just backfired horrifically that will be torment being eliminated from the lower bracket and synapse going forward wow that is that is crazy that is such an insane finale to that just i don't even know what to say incredibly played by yokat incredibly played by uh, by the survivors there but yokat coming out on top taking the 4k and uh, i believe that's going to be where i uh, actually tap out of this uh, this stream so uh I don't. Yes. I don't remember the rest of the schedule, but um, but yeah, I so, don't. Uh, this will this will be it for both of us, and we have one more match coming up. It'll be another lower bracket match. It will be Ariandel versus Sinners with Dyer and Veronica coming in. We're gonna have Doctor Mastermind and Nurse. So please stick around for the last match of the day and the next set of casters. All right, everyone, we've got a special feature here. We are joined by Pale of Team Synapse to talk about this match that just happened. Pale, we had a really hype endgame in that last game. What was it like to be watching this Plague set turn around so fast? I mean, uh, we were all in Discord, like, uh, uh, very sad because we were going to lose. And, uh, and then at some point, we realized that uh, Yokat uh, pulled off the unpullable. So uh, we were... Uh, we were like out of our minds uh, when, once it happened. And uh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm assuming go, going into this match, this is, you know, a really big upset. And are, are you looking forward to continuing your run in the lower bracket here? Of course, of course we are. Like, uh, we're uh, matched against uh, X9, I guess, no? And uh, we're probably going to do our best to pull it off against X9 as well. Another question, um, on, so we saw in, in the first two sets, we had both teams sort of winning the sets that the other team picked. Were, were you expecting these, like the Hillbilly set and the Chucky sets to go the way that they did? Uh, in our minds, we were like, okay, uh, the Billy set is probably not in our favor, because like, they have uh, way, more, uh, way better uh, 1v1 players than us. 
and like we were like the chase is gonna be uh, probably very bad for uh, for us, and instead for them it's gonna be very good. So we have less, uh, we are less likely to win it. But instead we we won it, and like in the Jackie set, that was supposed to be f uh, free for us because we were like uh, uh, like uh, your tournament has never played it, uh, and we knew it, and uh, and we had practiced it uh, for uh, for um, the match against Oriandel already. So we were uh, we were um, expecting to win the Chucky set, and instead it was like the opposite. Okay, so I want. Can you walk me through if you know the the thought process for why the the plague tiebreaker? You know, we we sort of posited the the hillbilly and Chucky sets as being a little bit more mechanical killers, being able to play around your chases. But the plague set is a very different kind of game plan with the the strategic perspective. Was that something that you thought you'd be able to pull off against torment? You know, you mentioned them being one v one players. Were you confident about your your four v one going into that set in particular? Yeah, we were kind of confident. Like we knew that it was like probably more torment sided as a as a set. But uh, it's like both teams' uh, main pick, so we just uh, try to do our best and uh, try to pull it off against them, and uh, it kind of worked. So I'm happy about it. I believe that Alex has some questions. You want to go ahead, Alex? Yeah, I actually want to throw some at you. Um, so did you guys plan? Okay, let me let me back this up here. At the very beginning of your guys' match, we saw uh, Yo Cat make a very very aggressive play with, um, you know, media taking red spit, trying to get it down. What exactly was the plan there? And what did you guys do to compensate when it appeared to have not worked out and uh, the Spartans actually kind of recovered? I mean, we were, uh, we were like, okay, it's fine. It's not like we were expecting to lose this. So uh, it doesn't really matter, you know? But then... Uh, Fair enough. We, we, then once it happened, like, we were uh, so happy about it. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely, uh, definitely yeah, like, a great win there. And uh, just last thing here for you, I guess. Uh, moving forward, what is your guys's uh, what's your guys's plan to uh, to keep pushing forward in these uh, in these matches you guys now get to play? Uh, our plans are uh, to uh, keep performing uh, at a uh, good level, like as a team, and uh, participate to further events of DBDL and uh, some other events, like major events for awesome. DBD. Alrighty. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck. Congratulations on your victory. Very well played from Thank you guys you. and uh, from your killer.